Eight months ago, I bought my very first buy-to-let property. And in this video, I'm going to show you all of the costs and then all of the key figures and the cash flow. So with this property, I saw it on the market for £110,000. It was a really, really good deal at the time, just before the property market was starting to boom, but it was just after COVID and the whole pandemic stopped. I managed to get the purchase price for 106,000. I initially offered 100 on a bridging loan, but the vendor wouldn't take it. And about four, five, six weeks later, the vendor got back in touch and said, do you want it? What could you offer? Somebody offered 105, I went for 106. The deposit off the back of that was a 25% deposit. So I paid 26,500 on that 106,000. The stamp duty on this, because it was in a limited company, I paid 3%, but because of the purchase price being so low, it was just the 3%. So that was £3,180. Then the solicitor was about £1,500. The guarantee, so whenever you get a mortgage in a limited company, you have to sign a personal guarantee. Unfortunately, you have to do it with every single mortgage you sign in a limited company. The personal guarantee just means that if the company stops paying the mortgage, you will pay it back personally as an individual. So I'm at Brighton, we'll pay it back if the company fails. You then got the broker, which I paid £600 for. The survey on the property, just to make sure that it wasn't gonna fall down, which was £300. And then the refurbishment, which we originally anticipated would be about £11,000, but ended up being £17,000. So when you look at all of this and put in the total cost, what you want to do is add the deposit, the stamp duty, the solicitor's fees, guarantee broker survey and the refurb. So my all-in total cost was £49,430 in the end. Now, I bought this house just using a normal mortgage rather than bridging it and decided just to get a two-year fix and refinance it in two years' time. So rather than doing an instant buy, refurb, refinance, instead I would buy, refurbish it, rent it for two years and then refinance it. For the key figures, so the mortgage is £81,000 and that includes a product fee as well. So you've got 81000 it was about 79500 plus that deposit of 26500 equals the purchase price. The gross development value today is £175,000, which is really staggering. When we initially did the deal, I thought it'd be worth about 135 at a push and it really was a kind of break-even project, but that has really helped it with the current market. So the profit has been... £44,570, which I never, never anticipated, but really, really pleased with that, which means the equity, so including the money I've put in plus the profit that was on top, is now £94,000 that sat in the company in the value of this property. And the way I get to that is if the GDV is £175,000, I owe the bank £81,000, whatever is left is equity back in the business. So the return on investment, which is the profit divided by the costs, is 90% and I'll come back to the 101% in a second. 90% is really, really good. Typically, if you're doing a buy, refurbish, refinance, you want to aim for around 30% return on investment. That's considered healthy within a year. So 90% is three times the average and is very, very rare in this hot property market as well. Cash flow. So the rent is 780 pounds a month. The mortgage off of that is £203 on an interest-only mortgage. It's around 2%. It was just before the base rate started to shoot up. The maintenance, so is around 10%, so I call that £78 a month. I'm self-managing, so there's no management fees. Insurance is £21 a month, which means out of that £780, by the time you've taken out some of those costs, the net monthly income or the net monthly profit is £478, which is really good and really healthy for a buy to let, which means every single year that gives me £5,738 completely pure profit after all the costs and factoring in contingencies like the maintenance costs. But what's really interesting, £5,738 in a year, if you compare that to a cash ISA, at the market now the interest rates have gone up, which are around, I checked today, 2.73%. On that initial cash that I put in, which is 49,430, at 2.73%, that would give me 1,349 pounds on a 12 year, 12 month cash ISA. So when I compare that 1,349 to the 5,738 pounds I'm getting, it's almost four and a half times the amount I'm getting through the buy to let purely on the rental income. So if I actually add the rental income in a year, plus the profit made on the flip, so this is just a year one return in investment, that's where 101% comes from, which means I've made more 
money than what I put in originally to actually fund and create the deal. So in 12 months, the whole thing has paid itself off, which is really, really awesome. That means compared to a cash ISA, it's 37 times the amount of return compared to just putting your money into an ISA today. And that really shows the power of property. I never anticipated these figures when I bought the property. We were gonna go for 130K GDV. So this completely smoked out of the water. You could buy a buy to let in the market tanks and these figures wouldn't be the same. But for deal number one, this is really, really healthy. And that means that I've got enough capital and when I refinance in a year and a half, we'll be ready to go again with another big pot of money plus new savings and we'll go again on project number two or project number three. So I hope you found that useful. Have a look through the figures. If you really enjoyed this video, check out the playlist here, which goes through the full renovation of the whole buy to let from the plans, the renders, ripping out the property and showing you what happens step by step through that process. So check out the buy to let playlist here and I will see you in the next video.